Well, good morning. Welcome to Bible Baptist Church. We're able to stand and take your hymnal, hymn number 314. 314. We're going to sing Ring the Bells of Heaven. We'll sing that first and last of 314. Ring the bells of heaven, there is joy today. For us all returning from the wild. See the Father beat him out upon the way, welcoming his weary wandering child. Glory, glory, how the angels sing. Glory, glory, how the loud harps ring. Tis the ransom army like a mighty sea, pealing forth the anthem of the free. On that last. Ring the bells of heaven, spread the feast today. Angels swell the glad of time to strain. Tell the joyful tidings, bear it far away. For a precious soul is born again. Glory, glory, how the angels sing. Glory, glory, how the loud harps ring. Tis the ransom army a mighty sea, pealing forth the anthem of the free. 311, turn over to 311, redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hymn number 311, redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through his infinite mercy. His child and forever I am redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. On that second, redeemed and so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. Let's sing that third. I think of my blessed Redeemed. I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem, redeem, his child and forever I am. I shall see in his beauty the king in whose law I delight, who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem, redeem, his child and forever. few announcements here um y'all pray for pastor he's got a stomach bug and uh so if you ever had that stomach bug you know what he's going through so you know how to pray for him amen and then so y'all pray for him and then uh i know we had several mention in sunday school and uh if you didn't get a prayer sheet from wednesday night they're on the back table y'all get one y'all pray for the church family pray one for another if, if you're not praying for them then who is? Okay, that's how I see it. That's how I see uh, when my sister asked me to pray for her. If I'm not praying for her, then who really is praying for her? Okay, so I'll you know, pray for them. Uh, speaking, of, pray for my sister. She's supposed to have some knee surgery uh, Friday. She goes for consultation tomorrow, and they will see if she needs an iron infusion before they do that. So I'll you know, pray for her, and uh, she, and then uh, you know, welcome uh, the new baby Keeler. Uh, Brother Andy and Christina, they had nine pound something something bouncing baby boy. Okay, 
And uh, Levi. Levi? All right. Levi. Levi Keeler. Andy? Andy Levi? Or no? Don't know. His brother's right here, so I don't. <laughs> you don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> So uh, I'll pray for them. They're home, uh, and if you wanted to stop by and bring them food, I know they'll be happy for it. I guess I'll just volunteer y'all for something. Okay? Uh, I am uh, Team D, uh, giving announcements, so no telling what we'll say up here. Now remember, uh, not next week, but in two weeks, we have the Rochesters in on May 29th. There will be a concert here at 7, and then uh, May 30th, uh, we'll, they'll do Sunday school and also Sunday morning service. So y'all be in a part for that. I know there's a basket in the back already trying to um, uh, collect some funds for that. Um, and then uh, I'll be doing that. All right. You get my attention. All right. Remember, uh, also there's a men's skeet shoot Saturday, June 12th. Okay. Uh, I know Brother Dalton Smith um, is heading that up. Sign-up sheet in the back. Uh, it says bring 25 to 50 shells, uh, but if you're like me, you'll need a couple more boxes, okay? <laughs> Just, I mean, I went to dove hunting once with uh, people, okay? And I couldn't hit a bird. I don't think I even hit a tree, okay? Just, <laughs> and that's the only time I went. So he said, you got to lead it. I said, I'm trying to lead it. I guess I'm leading it too much. I don't know. Anyway, so y'all come do that. Skeet shooting's fun for the guys. And uh, remember, uh, if you have any questions, see him. Location is to be sent out later. Uh, set that up. And if you bring your kids, you are responsible for your kids. How about that? And their gun safety. All right. Just, I mean, everybody be safe. And if you have kids, you, you be responsible. Got it? That's how simple that is. All right. If that sounds... Whatever, it sounds whatever it is, okay? It means take care of your kids, okay? Um, and then, uh, I don't think there's anything. Uh, this Friday is the school's graduation uh, and awards. So that's at 7? Seven? 7. 7 o'clock, come be a part, come encourage the Christian school kids. And I know they worked hard. I know Carly's, I think, finished all hers this week. She said math was rough. And I said, math is always rough. It will always be rough from here till you get out. That's just because it's math. Just part of it. Once you get past two times two is four, that's, that's where it goes. Okay? Whew. All right. I just read. I'm just a reading guy. I can read. I can understand reading, but not math. You give me algebra? No, I can't do that. All right? I don't understand the whole concept of imaginary numbers. This is an understood one. Then write it. Amen? All right, anyway, uh, Brother Ben, Jamin, come up here and get me out of this trouble, and uh, we'll pray. We love you. We love you. We'll pray, and then we'll move on. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day that you've given us together in your house, dear Lord. I thank you for the spirit that's here this morning, dear Lord, and the songs, and, and, and uh, Lord, I just pray that you would continue that, dear Lord. I just pray that you would be with our pastor. Uh, dear Lord, I just pray that you would heal his body, dear Lord. I pray that you would touch him. And uh, bring him back to us soon, dear Lord. I just pray that you would uh, strengthen him. Lord, I just pray for all those that were mentioned, the request, dear Lord. There's people that are sick and hurting, dear Lord, from, from death, dear Lord. I just pray that you would comfort where comfort is needed, dear Lord, and heal where healing is needed. Lord, we love you. I pray that you'd meet with us today. Thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hey. 
Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within. Upward I look and see him there, who made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me, to look on him and pardon me. Behold him there, the risen lamb, my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory. Stand hymn number 305. We've worked on that song for a year now. So that's pre COVID. So 305, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing all earth his wonderful love, proclaim. Hail him, hail him. Archangels in glory, strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms, he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. On that second. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail him, hail him, Jesus the crucified. Sound his praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows, love unbounded, wonderful, deep, and strong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Our great Savior, 309, 309, 309. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Hymn number 309. Jesus, what a friend for sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul, friend 
times may fail me, foes assail me, he, my Savior, makes me whole. second. Jesus, what a strength in weakness. Let me hide myself in him. Tempted, tried, and sometimes failing. He, my strength, my victory wins. I do now receive him more than all in him I find. He hath granted me forgiveness. I am his and he is mine. battle to accomplish your plan is your heart heavy laden do you fear the Lord's command do you feel that no one loves you and there's no use to try just bring your cares to Jesus your soul he'll satisfy Pick up the broken pieces and bring them to the Lord. Pick up the broken pieces, trust in His holy word. He will put yeah. them back together and make your life complete. Just place the broken pieces at the Savior's feet. You may feel that there's no hope. Broken hearts just cannot mend. Though you're torn in many pieces, Christ can make you whole again. Storms of doubt blow all directions, but don't you be afraid. God can make all corrections. He made a body out of clay. Pick up the broken pieces and bring them to the Lord. Pick up the broken pieces. Trust in His holy word. He will put them back together and make your life complete just place the broken pieces at the savior's feet 
just place the broken pieces at the Savior's feet. Amen. Amen. I can tell you this morning, if you're here and you got something broken in your life, your life's messed up, you wonder if it's worth living. It is. And God can help you. You just got to give him an opportunity. Amen. Amen. I got a phone call this morning early, and it was my little brother, our preacher, and he was sick. And uh, those of us in our family, when our little brother, when our brother gets sick, he's sick. Bless his heart. He's been that way ever since he was a little kid. And Mama always used to get him a wet wash rag and put it on his head and kind of try to calm him down a little bit because he's one of those that, when he gets sick, he's really sick. And he's really sick this morning. And um, I don't usually preach. On Sunday morning here, I usually teach a Sunday school class. And um, he said, Brother Lee's going to teach your Sunday school class, and you just teach your Sunday school lesson in the morning service. And that sounds easy, okay? But it's not easy, is it, Brother Lee? I mean, um, but I'm thankful that you're here, and I know God doesn't make any mistakes. And um, the Sunday school lesson (laughs) that we're going to have this morning well, it's an unusual lesson, okay? And um, you'll see what we mean when we get into it. But I'm glad you're here this morning. It's good to have visitors. And uh, it's going to be in God's house. I mean, I just sat over here and just had a, a time during the song service this morning just thinking about our great Redeemer, what he's done. Where would we be without him? i tell you where it would be. It wouldn't be good. We're going to talk about that this morning in the um, morning service. You have your Bibles turned to Luke chapter 16. And uh, usually when I preach, and Brother Owen and some of you preachers, Brother Tucker, different ones here, you know sometimes we struggle with what the Lord would have us to preach, and especially on one like this where you just, you know, get a, a phone call. But my brother made it real easy for me. He said, I want you to teach your Sunday school lesson. Okay, so this was my Sunday school lesson this morning. And it's out of Luke chapter 16. The title of the lesson was this, Hell is a Real Place. Hell is a Real Place. Look at verse number 23, Luke chapter 16. The Bible says this, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Father Abraham afar off, and Lazarus, in his bosom let's pray father we love you this morning lord what a blessing it is to be able to call you our heavenly father when the choir was singing about what we have in you and lord the fact that our name's written it's written lord it's not just written in the lamb's book of life it's written in your hand and in your heart lord and we're just so thankful this morning for the the savior that we have the the wonderful savior and and like the songwriter said hallelujah what a savior Lord, I thank you this morning for salvation. Lord, I thank you for this passage in your word where you, Lord, all these words we're going to read this morning out of the Bible are are red letter. You say, what's that mean? That means you spoke them, Lord. They're words that you actually said, so we know it's the truth, God, because it comes from your word and it comes directly from you. And I pray you'd help us this morning as we look at the subject, hell is a real place. Lord, I pray you'd speak to our hearts. If there's somebody here that's lost this morning, that's on their way to hell, I pray that today would be a turning point in their life. Lord, those of us that are here that are not on our way to hell, I pray it'd be a turning point in our life where we'd get a burden about people that are going to hell. Maybe we could catch a little glimpse, Lord, of what hell's really like this morning. Please please bless this morning, Lord, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's times in the Bible when it's kind of like the Lord just pulls back the curtains and he 
allows us to, to see a picture. And I think this morning is a time like this. And he shows us a part of the world that's beyond what we see with our physical eyes here. And, and I'm thankful God has blessed us with such a wonderful world, a, a, a beautiful place to live in. And I've lived, I was born in Texas, and I, I love Texas. I may live in Arkansas, but I'm a Texan, Texan at heart. But um, uh, Arkansas is a beautiful place. And I've seen a lot of beautiful countries. Been seen the Grand Canyon and, uh, in our Christian school there in Texas. We travel a lot to uh, student conventions. By the way, there's some things out on the table in the back where our young people from our Christian school went um, a few, a couple months ago, maybe a month ago, back to a, a regional student convention in Clinton, Mississippi, and they completed competed in athletics and academics and preaching and singing and all kinds of things. And, and those are overall <clears throat> awards for the whole convention. So you look at those on the way out and that same group of students, it's about a dozen of them are leaving at the end of this week and heading to Hudson, Florida to represent our school in the international student convention. There'll be students from all over the world that'll be at that convention competing. So you pray for them and uh, y'all re help me remember you guys that are going at the end of the service, I'm going to have you all go back by the table so everybody know who, who they're praying for and everything. But um, <clears throat> I thank the Lord for um, Christian education, that we have an opportunity to have a, a Christian school here at the church. But um, sometimes, <clears throat> even though we live in this beautiful, we get to thinking that it's all right here, it's all right now. It's all what I can see with my eyes. Most of the things that we see with our eyes this morning, they're what the Bible calls temporal things. And you know what temporal means? Temporal means temporary. They're not going to be here forever. But every one of you, myself included, and everyone that lives on planet Earth today and that's ever lived on planet Earth, they're not temporal. Their bodies, are, our bodies are temporal. Okay, I'm sitting down this morning because I don't think I could stand up the whole time. I sit down and teach my Sunday school class usually. My body's given out on me. Okay, I'm 65 years old now. <clears throat> and I guess they consider that old, not to some of you, but I knew I was going to get old, Miss Peggy, but I, didn't, I thought it would take longer than it did. I mean, <clears throat> you know, everything's given out. I had to have a hip replacement several years ago. I asked the doctor, well, what's the deal with my hip? He said, your hip's old. And I said, well, the other one's fine. It's the same age as this one. So I don't know, but <clears throat> you can look at me and tell maybe I have overloaded um, the joints in my body for a long time, and it's starting to show up. This body that you see here, it's not going to live forever. But a new old preacher, and he used to say, when you look in somebody's eyes, the eyes are the mirror of the soul. You look somebody in the eyes. You know, sometimes when kids get in trouble, when dad we used to be getting on, brother J.D. and I, you know what we'd do? We wouldn't want to look him in the eyes. He'd say, look at me, boy, I'm talking to you. Why? Because if you look somebody in the eyes, you can tell a lot about them. Because there's something on the inside looking out. And that's your never-dying soul. And everybody sit, sit it here, seated here this morning is going to live forever somewhere. And the Bible talks about two eternal places. There's a place called heaven. Can I get an amen there? There's a place called heaven. Amen. And many of us have people that we know and that we love that are there waiting for us. And I'm thankful that heaven is a real place. We had a lesson on that in our Sunday school class just a week or so ago. Heaven is a real place. Amen. How you know that? Because the Bible said there, it, that it is. Jesus said in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. Heaven's a real place. But just like there's a real place called heaven, there's a real place called hell. And people that die without the Lord Jesus Christ are going to spend eternity in a place called hell. And Jesus pulls back the curtains this morning. And he lets us take a look at this place called hell. Look there in Luke chapter 16, very familiar passage of scripture. We'll start reading in verse number 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gates full of sores 
and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. I can picture these two men in my eyes as we read through the, through the story. We keep reading there in verse number 4. This is the rich man now crying from hell because it says he was in hell. He was in torment and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember thou, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, <clears throat> there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass. <clears throat> neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, Father, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. The Bible says, and I forgot, Brother Joe, to put this on. I'm not going to be running around, but they told me to put this lapel on. Brother Lee's talking about you had a backup announcement giver. Well, I'm backup preacher too, okay? I think I got that on, Brother Joe. I'm a third base coach, okay? If we had a ball team, I would be maybe, I like to be the third base coach, okay? Because all you got to do then is like this. That's what I always do on third base. If the, if the ball's not in the infield, you're getting this from me. If it's in the outfield and there's a chance, we're, we're going for it. They're going to have to throw us out at the plate if they're going to get us, okay? So I know how to do this, okay? Now, this is a whole nother story, okay? But it says there in verse number 28, look at verse 28. We're talking this morning about hell is a real place. Verse number 28 says, the last phrase, this place of torment. The Bible says in verse 23, and in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments. In verse 24 he said, I am tormented in this flame. In verse number 25 he said, God says, thou art tormented. The rich man has gone to this place for eternity, and it's a place of torment, torment. When I was a, a teenager, I had a bus route. My, our dad was a pastor in Arlington, Texas, and when I was 17, I had my own bus route. I was the bus captain, and every Sunday morning I would go, and, and um, my dad's church was on Polyweb Road. They changed the name of it to Sublet Road, but I would go there to the church, and right down about a mile from the church was a little grocery store called Jim's Grocery and I would go there and I would get a soft drink for myself and for my bus driver and he would get there a little bit after I did but I would go and I would have him a drink ready to go for when we went on the bus routes on, on Sunday morning and one Sunday morning when I got to the church I looked down the road and it would be it would be closer than going from here to what's the little store up here why would it, it'd be comparable to going from here to there and, and I got ready to go to the store, and I could see just black smoke just billowing up. It looked like somebody was burning tires. You ever seen them burn tires and just really, really black smoke? And I got in my car, and I started down there. And about halfway between our church and Jim's Grocery was a, a bridge. And I got down there, and there was a vehicle on the bridge. And that's where all the smoke was coming from. And there was an old couple standing in their front yard, lived right next to their house was a house right before the bridge, and they were standing out there and just watching. And I said, what happened? And they said, well, we heard a crash when we came outside. And he, they said, that truck's been burning like that for 10 minutes. And then you could hear the sirens start coming, and I couldn't go to Jim's Grocery because the bridge was blocked. And um, 
the fire trucks came and they put out the, the fire and, and one of the paramedics that was there was a, a young man that I knew. His name was Hill, Hill Love. And I went up to Hill and I, he said, yeah, it's bad. He said, that guy lived in a Royal Coach. Royal Coach was a mobile home park right next to Jim's. And he'd been driving from his, ha from his work in Dallas. He got off, he'd worked a third shift and got off at 7 o'clock um, Sunday morning in Dallas and was driving home and he was less than a, he was about a quarter of a mile from his house and he fell asleep and he hit the bridge and they got the fire out and I asked Hill, I said, Hill, would it be okay if I walked over there and looked at that? He said, you don't want to do that. I said, well, I, I really would and I walked over there and he was in his pickup and he was stretched across, he hit the bridge and it, you know, Truck caught on fire and ended up killing him, but he was stretched across the front seat. His door was jammed up where he couldn't get out, and he was stretched across the front seat trying to get out of the other door. And you couldn't even tell it was a person. It looked like if you had a weenie roast and you were doing marshmallows, and one of the marshmallows fell off in the fire. That's what it looked like. And the side was popped open, and you could see, and it was, it was horrible. It was horrible. The smell. What are you saying, Brother Bob? I'm saying hell's a place of torment. It's a terrible place. You don't want to go there. If you're here this morning and you're not sure you're on your way to heaven, you need to make sure before you leave here. Because hell's a terrible place. <clears throat> Physical death is separation from the body, but spiritual death is separation from God in hell. In hell. And... Um, it's not good. You don't want to go there. You don't want anybody you know to go there. Three points this morning quickly. Number one, the proof of this place of torment is given to us in the scriptures. How do you know hell's real? Because the Bible says so. Okay? The Bible says so. It's proved in the scripture. Okay, we read there. The rich man also died and was buried and in hell. He lift up his eyes being in torments. And then verse 24, he said, I am tormented in this place. How do we know hell's real? Because the Bible says it is. How many of you had a, have a red letter edition of the Bible? These words we're reading this morning, are they in red? Yeah. You know why? Because Jesus said it. I mean, it'd be just as well, I mean, Luke wrote it, but, but I mean, these are at, words out of Jesus' mouth. Okay? Turn to Matthew. We're going to look at Matthew for just a minute. I'm talking about the Bible proves that there's this place called hell. Matthew chapter 13, look at verse 49. Matthew 13, 49, the Bible says this, So shall it be at the end of the world. The angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. The Bible says hell is a furnace of fire. People are going to be wailing. They're going to be gnashing their teeth. Turn over a few chapters to Matthew chapter 23. This is the Bible, okay? This is not my, I can't say like Brother J.D., it's not my red-headed opinion because I'm not red-headed. This is not my black-headed opinion, okay? This is the Word of God. If you believe God's Word, then uh, you won't have any problem with this. And if you have a problem with it, it may be because you don't believe God's Word. Matthew 23, 33, look what, and if I'm not mistaken, yep, this looks like a red letter too. 23, 33, Matthew Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how shall ye escape the damnation of hell? Hell's not a good place. You don't want to go there. Turn over a couple pages, Matthew 25. Matthew 25, verse 41. We're talking about how the proof of this place of torment is in the scriptures. Verse 41. You say, this would have been an unusual Sunday school lesson. Yeah, it is. But we don't have enough of this. We don't have enough of this. Jesus preached eight times on hell in his three and a half year ministry. So I heard Brother J.D. say about every six months we all just clear off a spot and preach on hell. Why? Because hell's real. It's not something we like to hear about, but it's something we need to hear about. Look in verse 41. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye curse it into what? Everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell's not even prepared for you. It was pre prepared for the devil. 
Look at verse 46, just down a couple of verses. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto life eternal. I don't know about you. I want to be in that second group. I don't want to go away to everlasting punishment. I want to go away to life eternal. And Jesus makes the difference. We won't turn there. Revelation 10, 14, 10 says that that's talking about those in hell and says they'll be tormented with fire and brimstone. Fire and brimstone. I thought I knew what brimstone was. I looked it up and basically it's about like lava is what it is. Fire and brimstone. Revelation 19, 20 talks about being cast into a lake of fire. August 18th, 1972, I was a lost preacher's kid. Everybody thought I was okay. I was 16 years old, almost 17. My dad was my pastor. I had made a profession of faith. Everybody thought I was okay. And on Friday night of a tent revival, the evangelist preached on Revelation 20. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And whosoever is not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. And I realized being a preacher's kid wasn't going to take me to heaven. And I knew hell was a real place. And I knew I was a sinner. And I knew if I died like I was, I'd have died and gone straight to hell. And I went forward. And the evangelist said, what would you come for, Bobby? And I said, Brother Collins, I need to be saved. He said, you need to go over there and talk to your dad. And I went, and my dad took the Bible, and he showed me from the Bible verses that I already knew. But he led me to Jesus Christ. And if something were to happen to me right now, I mean, I'm going for a, a heart uh, what do you call it? Uh, what I said it was? Uh, hook you up to all the wires. Um, uh, cardiogram, electrocardiogram tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Okay, I've got five stents. I mean, i got issues. Okay, Brother J.D. had issues. Okay, he talked about that last week, being a bedwetter and all that. I'm not getting into those kind of issues. But i got issues with my health, okay? And, um, I mean... Uh, I'm not in bad shape for the shape I'm in, and, and round is a shape, okay, so, but y'all pray for me, but, I mean, if something happens to me, y'all don't have to be worried about Brother Bob, Amen. okay, because I, I know where I'm going, and it's the good place, amen, I'm going, I'm going to heaven, before, if, if I was to fall out of this chair this morning dead, before my body hit the ground, I'd be there with Jesus, amen, amen. I just want y'all to know that, I just want y'all to know that, so, but hell is a real place. Um, I heard a poem, and I don't have time to do this, but my last two points are real short, so how many of y'all believe that? <clears throat> um, I heard a poem when I was a little boy. I heard a preacher preach on hell, and he read this poem. He said, Hell, the prison house of despair, here are some things that won't be there. No flowers will bloom on the banks of hell. No beauties of nature we love so well. No comforts of home, music or song, no friendship or joy will be in that throng. No children to brighten the long weary night, no love nor peace nor one ray of light. No mercy nor pity, pardon nor grace, no water, oh God, what a terrible place. The pangs of the loss no human can tell, no moment of ease, there's no rest in hell. Hell, the prison house of despair. Here are some things that will be there. Fire and brimstone are there, we know, for God and His Word has told us so. Memory, remorse, suffering and pain, weeping and wailing, but all in vain. Blasphemers, swearers, haters of God, sinners who refuse to be washed in the blood, Christ rejectors while on earth they trod. Murderers, gamblers, drunkards, and liars will all have their part in the lake of fire. The filthy, the vile, the cruel, and the mean, what a terrible mob in hell will be seen. Yes, more than humans on earth can tell are the torments and woes of eternal hell. Hell's a real place. It's a place of torment. And the Bible tells us that. Number two this morning, and this is a sad thing, people go to that place. When I read in the Bible, 
Brother Owens, that the devil and his angels are going to be cast there. I mean, I almost want to clap. That, that's, I'm glad about that. I'm glad they go there. I don't have anything good to say about the devil. If I, if I had to say one good thing about the devil, is he does his job. He's pretty good at his job. It doesn't bother me that the devil and his angels are going there, but you know what bothers me? Is that people have to go there. And guess what? That bothers God, too. God said he's not willing that any should perish. God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. If you go to hell, it's not God's fault. It is not God's fault. It's your fault. The rich man, he actually lived. And he actually died. And he went to that real place called heaven. Called hell. Because people that die without the Lord, they go to heaven. Lazarus was a real man. He lived and he died. But he had a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he went to heaven not because he was poor, but because he knew the Lord. And the truth of the matter is, that's what's going to happen to everybody. The Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die. And after that, the judgment. The Bible says we'll all stand before the Lord one day. And Lazarus ended up with God. Because he trusted God. And the rich man ended up in hell because he didn't. But even in hell, you know what the rich man said? He said, I have five brothers. Send somebody to go tell them. I don't want them to come to this terrible place. Why? Because it was a place of torment. And we're all going to face death one day. And it's up to us where we go. Yes, hell is a real place, and yes, people do go to hell. But I like this last point, and that is, no, number three, provision has been made Amen. to escape that place. And that's why my heart got so full this morning when we were singing these songs about being redeemed and about our great Savior. And the choir was singing that song. I don't remember the name of I don't know that I ever heard that one, Brother Lee, but it was good. It was good hearing the ladies sing about our name being written in his heart and on his hand. Luke 19.10 says, The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. If you're here this morning and you're lost, Jesus is looking for you. He doesn't want you to die and go to hell. If you go to hell, you're going to have to stumble over the cross of Jesus Christ. Why? Because God sent his Son. That's the whole reason. How do you know hell's real, Brother Bob? How many of y'all ever heard of John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God doesn't want you to go to hell. God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. God doesn't want anybody you know to go to hell. He doesn't want anybody. That's why we got gospel tracts back there. You say, Brother Bob, you're preaching to the choir. I'm saved. Praise the Lord. Okay, Praise the Lord you are. There might be somebody who's not here today. I grew up in church after 10 years old, and I wasn't saved till I was 17. So there could be somebody like that. But I'm trusting most of you here are saved. If you're not, we'll give you an opportunity to get that taken care of in a minute. But those of us that are, everybody we know is going to one of these places. Everybody we see, every time I'm seeing cars drive by out here, and every person in each one of those cars that goes by is going one place or the other. And we got the message. Um, years ago, we had a, a new youth director that came to our church, uh, Brother Scott Seifert, and I was meeting Brother Scott here at the church or when he first came into El Dorado uh, to be our youth pastor, and he pulled up, and we were outside, and we were standing outside talking, and once again, we, we were looking down towards Smackover. I was telling him, you know, yeah, this is a, you know, El Dorado's back this way, Northlet's behind us, Smackover's that way, and we could see smoke coming up down the road. I mean, it was coming up bad again. And Brother Scott said, I wonder what that is. I said, I don't know. He said, well, let's get in my car and we'll go. Brother Scott, he was like, he was ready for adventure. You know, he's a young guy. And so we jumped in his car and drove down the highway. And there was a mobile home on fire on the other side of the road. And we pulled in. There wasn't any fire trucks or anything there. This thing was just blazing. And we pulled in and we saw the family. There was a, a house there and then there was a mobile home to the side. And I think just... Figuring it out in my own mind, I think probably Grandpa lived in the mobile home, and they said he fell asleep on the couch smoking a cigarette. 
and the couch caught on fire. Next thing you know, the tra trailers go pretty fast. And before the fire truck got there, man, that trailer was burnt. And you know what everybody was trying to do? Get Grandpa out of the trailer. You know, we tried to help get Grandpa out of the trailer, make sure everybody was away. Why? Because it was a fire. And even if the family hadn't been there, when we got there, I mean, Brother Scott, he's ready to run in and make sure. Why? Because that's the decent thing to do. I mean, if you can help somebody, we ought to help somebody. And we can. Because Jesus made provision for us to escape hell. There's, there, there's an escape this morning. The Bible says in Romans 3.10, As it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. That means nobody's good enough to go to heaven on your own. John 3.16, we just read that. The evidence there's a real hell is what God did. He sent His Son for you and for me and for the whole world. It says He loved the world. And what we got to do is we got to get saved if we're lost. And then once we get saved, we got to tell other people, Hey, the house is on fire. There's a hell. Get out. I watched a, a show the other day, and it was a, like a, a, there was a fire, and the, the people were going through the building, the firemen were, and they were saying, fire department, call out. Fire department, call out. And you know what they were doing? They were getting the people in the, in the fire, and some of them c couldn't get out by themselves. The, the smoke had already overcome them. And these firefighters were calling, and then people would groan or make a noise or, or wave or something, and the firefighters would go get them out. You know what? We're in the fire department. We're in the spiritual fire department. If you're saved, you know what we ought to be doing? We ought to be calling out, fire department, call out. We ought to be passing out gospel tracts. We ought to be using our influence. Okay, some of us, before we got saved, we weren't ashamed to use our influence. Amen? You ever, you, you know what I'm talking about. We ought not be ashamed to use our influence now either. I mean, we're not talking about, well, you know, some people are good, some people, but we're all sinners. Nobody's good enough to go to heaven. There's none righteous, no, not one. And they're going to perish if we don't tell them. Why did Jesus go to the cross? Why did he die? Why did he take the crown of thorns? Why did he let them beat him and spit on him and mock him and everything he went through? Why did he do that? Why did he go to Calvary and bleed and die? Because a holy and a righteous God said there is a real hell. And every man is a sinner and headed there. And we're responsible to give the message to the lost. Everything he did, he did for us. He suffered it all. This song says, is that the youth choir that sings that one, Brother Joe? He suffered it all. Who sings that, the youth choir or the adult choir? Suffered it all because he loved me. You choir, Brother Joe, I'm putting it in a request. He suffered it all. Why? Because he loved me and he loved you. And if God went to everything, all the trouble he did to keep people out of hell, would you think it would be worth us doing something? I mean, how sad would that be for somebody to die and go to hell because they never heard. They never had the opportunity to be saved. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call, upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. That's what I did as a 16-year-old boy. I called on God. I prayed to God. And I told him, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I don't want to die and go to hell. So I'm asking you to come into my heart and forgive me of my sin and take me to heaven when I die. I'm counting on you and you alone to take me there. And guess what? He did. Amen. He forgave me. But you know what the next verse says? 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But the next verse says this, how then shall they call on him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they believe in him? How shall they call on him of whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? You say, well, I'm not a preacher. Well, it goes on and it says, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. You know what those little green things in a rack back up there are? They're, those are little preachers. And you may not be a preacher, but you could certainly preach the gospel by handing out gospel tracts. Hell is real. I want you to look one more place and we're through this morning. And, and, and I, we had an old preacher as one of our heroes, Daniel. Go to the book of Daniel. Dr. Jack Hiles, and he signed Bibles, heard him preach many times, and had a pastor... Uh, at the time, it was the world's largest Sunday school. 
They used to run over 200 buses. Man, you look at our buses out here now. <laughs> we got a bunch. Of, it looks like a used bus lot out here. We got a bunch of buses. And after we say the final amen this morning, the bus workers go next door. They'll have a lunch, and they'll go out and pick up boys and girls and bring them back and tell them about Jesus. From Brother House Church used to have 200 buses, and they would bring in thousands. But every time he signed a Bible, I got several Bibles that he signed. Every time he signed one of mine, the verse he put down was Daniel 12.3. Daniel 12.3. But I want you to look at verse 2. And we'll look at verse 2 and verse 3, and then we're going to be through. Daniel chapter 12, verse number 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Now, what do you think he's talking about, sleeping in the dust of the earth? That's people that have died, okay? It says... Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Now look what's going to happen. Some to everlasting life. Amen. I'm going to raise my hand right there. I'm getting in on that part of the verse. I have everlasting life. Okay. But look at the rest of this. And some to shame and everlasting contempt. Guess who that is. That's the people that went to hell. But I like this next verse. And this is the verse that Dr. Hiles would always sign. Daniel 12, 3. Watch this. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. You want to make, you want to make God happy? You want to shine forever and ever? Turn somebody to righteousness. Hand out a gospel track. Give a witness. Invite people to church. Win somebody to the Lord. Hell is a real place. Let's bow our heads this morning. Father, we love you this morning. And I'm so thankful that you love us enough to shoot straight with us, Lord. Hell's not a popular topic, Lord. It's not something we like to talk about or even think about, Lord. But I'm thankful this morning that you tell us in your word that hell is a real place. Lord, if there's somebody here this morning that's lost and on their way to hell, I pray that today might be the day of their salvation. And Lord, if there's Christians here today, and I know there are, Lord, that need to do a better job, like myself, Lord, of trying to keep people out of hell, I pray you'd speak to our heart this morning. Just have your will and your way and we'll thank you for it. Our heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I just want to ask you a couple questions, and we'll have our invitation this morning. If you're here this morning, and you say, Brother Bob, I do know if something happened to me, I'm not going to hell because I have the Lord Jesus as my Savior, and I'm thankful for that this morning. Will you just lift up your hand? Brother Bob, I'm on my way to heaven. Amen. God bless you. Maybe there's somebody here this morning, nobody's looking around, heads, eyes, heads bowed and eyes closed. Maybe there's somebody here this morning who say, Brother Bob, if I'm honest, I'm not sure about that. I have some doubts. I'm not sure I'd go to he he heaven if I died, but I sure don't want to go to hell. Would you pray for me? Is there anybody like that? You just slip your hand up and say, pray for me. Nobody's looking. I wouldn't call you out by name or anything. I just want to pray for you. Anybody like that? I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. Will you pray for me? I sure don't want to go to hell. Okay, then one last question. Brother Bob, I need to be a better witness that I have been I don't want somebody to end up in hell because I didn't tell them is there anybody like that this morning you lift up your hand and say pray for me I need to do better my hands up father you saw the hands you know the hearts I pray now you'll bless this invitation help us to respond to your word this morning and we'll thank you for it in Jesus name we pray amen let's stand number 157 if God's spoken to your hearts you come as we sing <coughs> God bless you. God bless you. Step out. Yeah, come on. Maybe God put somebody on your heart. Maybe you're thinking about some friend, some family member, some loved one. Maybe it's your neighbor. Maybe it's the person at the gas station. You don't even know their name. But you're not sure they're on their way to heaven. Get you some gospel tracts. So come down and pray for them. I told my Sunday school class last week we need to make a, a sweetheart prospect list. You say, what's that? Some people that you got on your heart that you don't want to die and go to hell and just start praying for them and just pray for them and pray for them and pray for them. 
that God will save them from hell if you're not sure if they're saved. And then God gives you the opportunity. You talk to those you've been praying for. Put some feet on your prayers. I didn't pick the message I was preaching this morning. The preacher did. It's my Sunday school lesson. Those of you that missed Sunday school, you got it anyway. By the way, we do have Sunday school at 10 o'clock every Sunday morning here, so you come. We've got classes for all ages, but if you're here this morning and you do not know, you need to get that taken care of. There's a lot of decisions you can pray about, a lot of things you can, you know, but man, if you're not saved, I wouldn't step out of the front door. I wouldn't get on smack over highway this morning if I didn't know for sure I was saved. You say, you really believe that, Brother Bob? I really do. I really do. God bless you. I appreciate you being here this morning. And I'm going to get the leaders dismissed in prayer. I want those young people that are going to um, the International Student Convention, will you all go back and take a place back there? Uh, some of these guys, or we had guys, people went and preaching, our ensemble one. We had solos and duets and trios and quartets and shot put and discus and basketball. And, I mean, you name it, all kinds of things. A lot of them did art. Some of them took pictures. Some of them drew things. I mean, there's there's over a hundred. There's 140 different events you can enter in, and so these are the cream of the crop. Okay, remember there's sign up sheet in the back if you want to go skeet shooting. Man, skeet shooting! I ain't, I can't hit nothing flying either, man. I miss my ske- I can't hit the skeeters when they're on me, much less a skeet with a shotgun. I'd be dangerous with a shotgun. Okay, and then I don't, whatever other else announcements we're supposed to make, the offerings back there, we were going to start this week passing it again, but I'm going to let Brother J.D. do that. So offering plates back there is also a basket for the Rochesters. The gospel singing group is going to be here later on. So God bless you, and visitors. Thank you for being here today. Y'all come back and hear our real preachers sometimes. All right. Uh, Brother Ben, can you take this plate for, we're going to do a love offering for Brother Bob. And uh, that's what we normally do, so we're going to. Try to do that. And youth choir at what time, Brother Joe? 5.30. 5.30. Meet next door at 5.30, and they'll go through a couple. And then uh, be here in your place, 6 o'clock tonight. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for Brother Bob and the Lord. Just